So we start off by looking at current and charge, three effects with an electric current, and this overlaps quite a lot with what you've done in junior cert. Heating effect, how would you demonstrate the heating effect of an electric current? Sean? Bulb, put a bulb, bulb. Maybe a circuit with a bulb in it. And heating effect, so how do you demonstrate it's getting hot? <laughs> ah, very good. Except we don't like idiots, but we've got anything against idiots. What's wrong? Oh, no, I didn't. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Not only we've got anything against idiots, but in physics, we want to. So the idiot is going to say, ah, that's hot. And I look at him and say, how do you know it's hot? And he said, because it feels hot. And I want to say, but I don't believe him. How do you demonstrate to, to mm -hmm. non believers mm -hmm. that you've got a heating? Okay, you can look at a burn, but you can just as easily get a burn from freezing. Uh, Ian, talk to me. Put a thermometer next to the Put a thermometer next to the bowl. And you should see. Right. So the notion here, and, and it's a big concept in physics, is that you take the human out of the experiment. So it's no longer reliable on subjective concepts, like a person thinks, oh, that seems to be getting hot. Because what's hot to one person might not be hot to another person. So you take the human out of it and you put object, objects in there, like a thermometer. Another example, a sillier, or a sillier one, an even more basic one, just a kettle. You plug in the electric kettle. How do you quantify that it's getting hot? Boil Okay, you could actually boil it. But again, just to demonstrate even quicker than that, you want to stick your thermometer back into it. Okay? So you're taking the human element away from it, but it's a nice quick demonstration. Right? Uh, magnetic effect. How do you demonstrate the magnetic effect of an electric current? Yeah, no, no, no. Make an electric magnet. Make an electric magnet, that would do? You put the wire to the card and then get the... Compass. Put a wire to the card. What do you have to do with the wire? Yeah, to make it a solenoid. A coil. Not, a, not even a solenoid, but what do you have to do with the wire in order to make it? What do you have to do in order to make an electric current? Charge it. You, 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 uh, you've no, got to put charge going through it. So you've got to attach it to a potential difference. So here we go. Uh, one of these little guys here. There's your circuit, electric circuit. So all you've got to do to demonstrate it is close the circuit, and what should happen? It's going to enjoy the electric current. It's got a magnetic field associated with it, so as soon as you turn on the current by closing the switch here, it deflects the magnetic compass. The magnetic compass is only a piece of metal, and it reacts to the magnetic field with the current going, going around there. So if you, wanted it, if you want to demonstrate the magnetic effect associated with a current, just get a simple current going in a circuit, and all you need for that is a wire and a battery. The only other thing you need is a little magnetic compass that will react to the magnetic field associated with the battery there. Okay, that's all there is to that. Uh, so I can close that one. Uh, we were then looking at the third effect, which is the chemical effect. How would you demonstrate the chemical effect in an electric current? What would you do with um, sodium sulfate? What would you do with sodium sulfate? I don't know, I'm so bored yesterday. <laughs> Easier, again, all of this is junior cert. You put two uh, like, electrodes in some water. Or something. Put two electrodes in water, and what do you, what do you get? Into hydrogen and oxygen. I mean, here's H2O, so it splits it up into hydrogen and oxygen. You want to gather the two gases, so you put little test tubes above them, and then you want to test for carbon, you want to test for oxygen, you want to test for hydrogen. So, what you're doing is you're showing that the water is being split up into the two gases, and that therefore is a chemical effect of an electric current. Straightforward? Uh, use pH 245 and they put all of that together in one big circuit on pH 245. But once you can remember each of the three, it's a, a lot of this stuff is pretty basic. It doesn't get asked. Like, you won't be asked to define a conductor or an insulator. It might at ordinary level, but at senior level, we are just using this to get an understanding for the concepts we're going to use it later on. So that's conductor, that's insulator. Electric current, we said, is a flow of charge.